Theatrum Anatomicum, Latin for Anatomical Theaters, or stadium themed lecture halls where dissections of humans and animals would take place. Medical students gathered there to witness and learn about the human body, and artists were also welcome to participate. This would allow both the students and artists to observe and gain a deeper comprehension of the human anatomy. The University of Padua in Padua, Italy constructed the first anatomical theater, Palazzo del Bull, in 1594. Some other locations that have anatomical theaters are Anatomical Theater of the Archiginnasio Bologna, Italy, Old Operating Theater, London, England, Wach Amsterdam, Netherlands, Sala Himbernat, Barcelona, Spain, Ether Dome, Boston, Massachusetts, Tia Anna Tomasch's Theater, Berlin, Germany, and Indiana Medical History Museum, Indianapolis, Indiana. Cited, Schumacher, 2007, page 15. The first scientific dissections on animals and human bodies are dated back to the great Greek physicians. Regardless of such, the first anatomical theater was built in 1594. But as medical history developed and advanced, more anatomical theaters were constructed, increasing their use and public awareness. This increased use occurred between 16 and 1700. It became the hub of city life at the time due to the public's curiosity in dissections in the 17th century, which made it a must visit while traveling. The public's awe at the anatomical theater dissections began to decline around the 1800s. Dissections would regularly happen in the winter, so then there would be less decomposition. Whereas in the summer, the theaters would hold off on many dissections and present other materials. Women and children were uncommon to see on the dissection table, and few legal bodies could be used, so most of the time they would be dissecting criminals who were on death row and recently killed because of it. Then in the 18th and 19th century, cadavers became more limited, which resulted in anatomists grave digging, body snatching, and even sometimes murder. At other times, the cadavers would be sold to medical schools from other people who have gone grave digging. The surgeons who are occasionally referred to as the actors in the room would make the decisions when choosing a body for dissections. The families of the death row inmates would have to deal with the greatest humiliation of seeing their loved ones belittled for their transgressions after they pass away. The Dochach building in Amsterdam houses an anatomical theater on special occasions such as festivals, cited Wach Future Labs, the general public was allowed in and could take a look at skeletons or the prepared skin of those criminals. There was also a collection of stuffed exotic animals to be marveled at. Women were initially prohibited from entering theaters, at least not as medical students. Elizabeth Blackwell became the first female student to enroll in advanced medical courses in 1847. Both artistic and medical rationale were used to support the practice's continuation. The dissections that occurred in the anatomical theaters were witnessed by numerous artists. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Buonanarti, Visaccio, Donatello, Mantegna, Raphael, and Botticelli were among the Renaissance artists who dissected bodies or sketched dissections. Regarding Leonardo da Vinci, it is generally accepted that his fascination in human anatomy first emerged during his 1467 to 1476 apprenticeship at Versaccio's workshop. However, the exact date of his fascination is unclear. It is possible that Leonardo's fascination began after his move to Milan in 1482, where he had the experience of dissecting approximately 30 cadavers himself. This information is mentioned in the Britannica website, along with a book titled Leonardo da Vinci by Walter Isaacson, where the 27th chapter titled Anatomy Round 2 is where additional information reveals that 1508 to 1513 is when he started his anatomy studies once again. This experience inspired his well-known Vitruvian Man sketch from 1490, as well as his 1511 work of Fetus in the Womb. Leonardo da Vinci passed away May 2nd, 1519, himself not being dissected. Another artist with a well-known name and paintings related to anatomical theaters is Rembrandt van Rijn and how cited 
WAF Future Labs, the Amsterdam lesson in anatomy acquired their world fame from the paintings Rembrandt made of them. Titled The Anatomy Lessons of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, 1632, as well as Thomas Ekin, The Agnew Clinic, 1889, and his The Gross Clinic in 1875. In 1872, the traditional anatomical practice came to an end because of the medical advancements regarding the new audiovisual progress. Cited Schumacher, 2007, page 27, the psychologist Schermack from Leipzig designed the model of a modern auditory 1872 and named it Spectatorium. With this, there was no need for the original layout of the theaters and the traditional procedures that would take place along with the fact that anesthetics made it so that surgeons had no need to move quickly but take their time and ensure less mistakes with their work. Cited Schumacher, 2007, page 27, this was once and for all the end of the traditional anatomical auditory since a modern anatomical theater hall could not derive from the ancient theatrum anatomicum but from a modern cinema. Finally, anatomical theaters in general became officially obsolete in the early 20th century.